Yeah, I'm waiting for the 500 rupees I'll be giving it for today. Because like, I couldn't find any volunteers. <laughs> so I, uh, I thanked this one. Okay, so, so I did, uh, I mean, this uh, uh, So I'll be talking about 500 rupees for yourself. So, uh, so I work, uh, I'm Guo Xiang, so I work at this course. So we are building, this course is basically building a next generation of forum software. Uh. So, um, so today I'll be talking about like five random performance tips. So these tips are basically extracted out from this course, like what I've seen uh, uh, my, like the other developers at this course do. Uh, so my first tip, uh, you can ignore all the words, uh, because it's supposed to be a blog post, but then I didn't, I didn't have time to do slides. But the first tip is actually uh, to use um, enable Rack Mini Profiler and use it in production. So Rack Mini Profiler like, was created for you to tune, uh, like have gained visibility into what your app is doing. Uh, where it's spending its time uh, in production. So let's. So this is. So this is my forum. So if you enable, right, I can see. Okay. So on this page, when I render this topic, I'm doing 43 SQL queries. I can go in and see like what queries are being uh, executed, and the individual time. So it's like uh, this query took 20, 20.4 milliseconds and stuff. Uh, so the idea is that this is meant to be used in production because on de development, right, the hardware is different. There's a lot, uh, a lot more other noise. Uh, so there's other things that comes with mini profiler. So let's see if I want to look at the. You can basically get like the flame graph of what your uh, of that page is doing. So fl uh, flame graph is like. Uh, every 0 0.5 seconds, uh, that's the default. It takes a stack of what methods are being called. So it's just rendering. So each like column, right, it's the stack at uh, in 0 0.5 second intervals. Uh. So you can do a lot of things like, uh, oh, I can't zoom without a mouse. Ah, uh, I'm getting there. How do you zoom? <laughs> Wait, that the words will appear soon. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh shit! Now I can't scroll. Oh, okay. Okay, this is still demo. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, uh, so so flame graphs are useful in trying to see at uh what your app is doing like over time while it's rendering the page itself. So that's the first one. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty sure every one of you, when you deploy the production, you run. Oh, the thing is getting cut off. <laughs> yeah, uh, so you all will run assets, pre compile. But uh, what we found out at Discourse, right? So Discourse is both a Rails and Ember app. So we are not using like Ember CLI, lah, which is like running two separate apps and using Discourse as a backend. So we are running, uh, so the files for Ember, all, all JavaScript file, files for Ember, right? It's inside the assets folder for. Uh, inside, inside the assets folder of the, our Rails application itself. So what I realized over time, right, is that pre-compiling assets by using the default like Rails um, sprockets out of the box, right, it's slow. So the thing is that uh, when you uglify your JavaScript files, it's using, uh, it's running the default uglifier gem, right, Ag uglify JS runs on the Ruby Racer JavaScript interpreter. So that is slow. So we wanted to see like, what if you run it on the Node.js uh, Node interpreter. So let's say if you do a benchmark, right, of both uglifying and gzipping a single, for, for, for this benchmark, I use like the jQuery file. Lah. So you actually see that uh, if you do it, uh, like you just uh, uglify and gzip on the system itself, you actually, uh, you can speed up your pre assets pre-compilation by about 30%. Lah. So it's like 30% faster out of the box. Uh, then it's, it's not very difficult to implement. Uh, I'll post these slides online. Uh, so you, you can actually, because this course is open source, so our code is for everyone, uh, it's out there for everyone to have look at. You can actually go to this file, and then you'll see how we just, you don't even have to monkey patch uh, assets pre compile You just need to add like a rig, rig task on top of it. Then you can just, uh, so that's how we do it. Uh, the third one is actually fast blank. So I'm not sure if you guys follow like um, the recent development in Rails. So recently, someone from the Rails core team sped up like fast blank. Uh, no, so all your dot blank methods, dot dot blank question mark, he sped it up by thirty percent. So uh, previously, from our own like performance tuning using like Rack Mini Profiler, we noticed that like blank is slow. So what uh, one of the developers at Discourse did was basically he wrote a C extension for like the, your dot blank methods. 
So with that, right, you can easily get up to like six to twenty uh, six to twenty times faster uh, the dot blank metal. Uh, another thing that we realize is like like everyone likes to use dot try like uh, user dot try I don't know order dot try try something like that. Uh, so what we realize when like tuning performance again is that like try is slow. Like whenever you do a dot try, the what it does is actually it calls like respond to. So like when you do a user dot order, uh, the implementation you'll try call on the object you'll call a respond to whether it responds to an order or not, and it it doesn't returns you a nil. But with Ruby two point three, uh, you you can actually do like the you know the lonely operator, and that is way faster. So if you like run a simple benchmark, uh, try is easily four times slower than. Uh, your lonely operator itself. But then again, I mean, this is sort of like micro-optimization. So what you actually want to do is basically profile your own app. Then uh, if you see this happening, uh, then you optimize it. But uh, with 2.3, there's no reason to use, like, try anymore. Like, unless you're using the, there's a block method using. Uh, so my last tip is actually, um, when you are working on performance or trying to figure out like is my app slow, the thing you need is to have a baseline of your app because without a baseline, you, you actually don't know whether like how would you how would you know uh, if you have actually improved the performance of your app. Uh, so out of the box, right? There's this gem. Uh, it's called Derail Benchmarks. So out of the box, it works very well with uh, any Rails app. So like all you need to do is add the gem to your gem file, and then you can do things like bundle exec derailed bundle mem. It'll tell you like, uh, like the amount of memory usage. There's one that's interesting is, uh, what is this? Yeah, so there's other like different methods. Lah. So there's like perf iteration per second. So it basically hits your app on a certain route and then see how many uh, iterations that your app uh, responds to. Lah. So these are very interesting methods. Uh, but then there's a, the caveat is that this, uh, if you want to use this, uh, it's really, I, to me, I think it's meant for development. Like, you should also tune performance development. That's where you identify, uh, that's where you're doing most of your performance work in. But then if you want to do it in production, you have to configure your machine to the production, uh, to run in the production environment. That means pre-compiling your assets and all the stuff you do in uh, production. So like, so that's it, just now, right? It, like, uh, development and production parity is like unicorns, uh, so it never appear. So, so the idea I think is like still use Rack Mini Profiler in production. If you are if you are like profiling your app and see, uh, trying to find out where things are slow, and then just uh, couple with like derail benchmarks like, while you are try uh, while you are fixing stuff in development. Uh, or if you are feeling uh, like, or if your app, uh, if your app is really like a bit more complex and stuff, you can. Uh, write your own benchmark script. So what we do at this course is we actually uh, write our own script. We boot a unicorns. We boot like a, our, you boot, you run it. So basically you have to run everything what you do in production. Uh, you set up the production environment and then you run it locally. La. So it, it's, it gives us a pretty good idea. So for, for us, right, what we do is we hit, uh, we're using up, uh, where's the, 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 the. Yeah, so what we do is, oh, this screens. What we do is we hit, oh. Ah, okay. So, so what we do is like we seed our uh, database, then we hit like our most uh, important routes. And then we use Apache Bench to see like what, what are the response time for those routes. So usually this script, we use it when we are upgrading from like Rails 4.2 to Rails 5 or Rails 4.1 to Rails 4.2. So it gives us a lot of like insights to, like when you're upgrading Rails, Rails is not always, the upgrade is not always making your Rails app faster. Or a lot of times, like, uh, it made our app slower. La. So uh, this has been really helpful for us. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's all for my five random performance tips. Uh, so does anyone have any questions? Do you know if Rails still is planning to replace the implementation of drive if you see this set of uh, I have no idea, but I, I don't think so though because try has like try takes a block as well, like but I've never used that before, so I have no idea how it works. But usually, like most, the most common usage of try is like dot try dot try dot try, then end up with this long try chain that is.
it's really horrible to debug stuff. Yep. You're using it as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, so at Discord, we, we, we are still using try because uh, we are supporting multiple versions of Ruby. So we can't use the lonely operator, which is kind of sad. But yeah, well, yeah. So the, uh, does anyone have any more questions? Uh, yeah, okay, look for me after that uh, if you have any questions. Okay, we'll come to a high